For this reason, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Revelations 12.12 12. All right, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another Legion of Michael. I almost said the other one, Legion of Michael podcast. Welcome, welcome to one and all, and thank you very much for being here. Yes, last week we were on the road conducting training, and uh, well, we were away from the studio, and sometimes things happen, and that would be that. But we're back. We've got a brand new one. And uh, I want you to, to remind you, obviously, that you can always go to legionofmichael.com. That's right, legionofmichael.com. And that is your source. That is where you should go. And you can sign up for the training for the distance learning program. You can do that if you so desire. Uh, we've, and you can take a little quiz, a little are you ready? Your, what is your church's security preparedness level? You can take that quiz Maybe it'll stimulate your brain. Maybe it might give you something to think about that you hadn't thought about previously. So there you go. That's all free to you guys at legionofmichael.com. And, of course, you can always click the uh, the link in the show notes and you can support the show. Uh, you can support it monetarily if you desire, if you believe that you have received a benefit or a value from today's show, you can support it. There you go. And, of course, you can always support the show by sharing it, telling other people, letting other men and women of faith Christians know about this show. Ah, oh, the question. Now, the, uh, the original, uh, the verse, uh, you guys may know that. You fans of Iron Maiden definitely know it. I believe that uh, they took a little bit of liberties uh, with that. It says, Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath, because he knows the time is short. For this reason, rejoice, O heaven, and you who dwell in them. But woe to those of the earth and sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Are you ready? Has every generation thought that it was the last generation? I believe that people uh, during you know the, that who lived during the time of the Great Civil War, the American Civil War, or the uh, uh, I guess well I guess it's a, if if you think about it, the first American Revolution was a civil war because we were fighting against ourselves or against our uh, our parent nation. Do you think people? Do you suppose that the that the pastors and the, and the preachers and the thought and the reverends during uh, 1861, 62, 63, thought that this was the end of times. This is going to be the end of days. There's, there's war everywhere and, and, and pestilence and so forth. I'm sure that the people who uh, were living during World War I, World War I was a world war. Now, technically, this is it's a little bit of arrogance on the part of the Americans and the Europeans uh, because we were fighting. But were the people in South America fighting and Africa and Asia and Australia? Well, kind of, kind of. But uh, it's funny how we describe a war in Europe as a world war. Now, World War II was genuinely a world war. It was going on all over the continent of Europe, in Africa, and in Asia. Uh, so it was genuinely a world war. And do you believe that the people who lived during that time thought, this is it? This is it. If you believe that it's it's possible that the Christians who lived during World War II or World War I or whatever uh, thought, well, this is it. This is it. This is the big one. This is the one that's going to end the world. This is the coming tribulation. Has every generation thought that, or are we, or are we unique? How do we know that the time is short? 
Now, during a recent radio appearance, appearance, I advised, and that wasn't on this show, it was a different show, I advised listeners that it was time to get right with God. It was time to get right with Jesus. And I was not being glib. I, I wasn't being glib. If any of you guys heard that, I wasn't being a smart aleck. I wasn't being glib. It is time. Now, many of you or many Christians, I, well, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I'm not going to judge. But when we think of the words of Christ, when we think of quotes, when we think of direct words and quotes from Christ, we, all, we think of the Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We think of the Gospels according to those guys. We think, well, if you're, if you're looking for quotes from Jesus, that's where you go. You go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But don't forget the first three chapters of the book of Revelations are Christ Jesus revealing his thoughts to John in the book of Revelations. There are direct, if you have a red letter version, if you have the red letter version, which is the, the words of Christ are in red in the Bible, if you have a red letter version, then you open up Revelations and you start paging through it. You're like, wow, uh, Christ had a lot to say in the book of Revelations. Now, in uh, chapter 22, verse 7, Christ says, And behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And then he continues in uh, chapter 22. Chapter 22 is the last chapter of the book of Revelations. And Christ says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to reward each one as his work deserves. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And it goes on to say in that same chapter, Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral persons, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you of these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. What I just read to you was Revelations 22, verses 12 to 16. Ladies and gentlemen, it's right there. Now, is it for man... We, as men, as children of God, is it for us to predict the final hour, the final day? Is it for man to predict that? Does God expect us? Does God our Father expect, well, uh, I told my children uh, to be ready, and if they are not able to predict the final hours of the final days of the final years, if they can't figure that out, well, they they don't deserve to get into heaven. They don't deserve salvation. No. (laughs) Nowhere in the Gospels does it say, well, if you want salvation, you need to be able to predict the end of the world and the coming of the end of the world. You need to know when that is. And if you can't figure it out, if you can't figure out that puzzle, that riddle, well, then you don't get in. No, it doesn't say that at all, does it? No. You have to believe on him. And you need to have faith. That's how you get in. So you say, well, all right, then what's the purpose of the book of Revelation then? If we don't have to, if we're not required by God, by Jesus Christ, if we're not required to know and predict the final day, then then what is the purpose of the book of Revelation? The purpose of the book of Revelation is to give us warning, to help us understand to let us know and remind us that God has a plan, that judgment is coming. Often we look around and we see unfettered, unrestrained sin and depravity in our world. If you pay attention and you look around you, you will see sinners screaming, literally, not figuratively, literally in the streets, screaming in defense of their sin and their immorality. They're dancing in the streets. They're protesting. They're parading. 
to show off their sin in support of their sins, if they're, of their immorality. There is judgment coming for those people. It's coming, and it is coming soon. So if it's not for man to predict the final hour of the final day, then what is the responsibility of man? What is expected of us? Christ says in Revelations 3.3, 3, so remember what I what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. Then if you are not alert, I will come like a thief and you will not know for what hour uh, at what hour I will come for you. We've all heard that, right? You guys remember that? I will come as a thief in the night. You don't know, you must be prepared. In the gospels Christ talks about the faith, the good and faithful servants who prepare the household, when the, the owner goes on a journey and the good and faithful servants prepare the household and they look and, and wait for him to come back so that when he comes back, they are not surprised and unaware. It is not for you to predict. It's not for you to know. As a matter of fact, it says in that good book, it says that no man shall ever be able to predict the final hour of the final day. Because we are men, we are not gods, we are mere mortals, we are children of God, and it's not our job to know exactly the time, minute, hour that he's going to return. It is our job to be prepared. It is our job, it is our responsibility to get right with God, as I said before. That is your job. That is your responsibility. Your responsibility is to just be a prepared person. It's not to try and be Nostradamus. It's not to try and predict the future. You don't have to predict the future. That is the great thing about being a child of God, about being a saved child of God, a follower of Christ. You, you're not responsible for what happens in the future. You're not responsible for what happens during the during the rapture, during the end of days, you know, you are responsible for your own behavioral behavior and preparing yourself. Now you're going to have to, you know, sometimes we have to uh, have that look in the mirror and we have to ask ourselves, am I doing what is required of me? Am I preparing? Am I preparing my family and my loved ones and my church family? Are we prepared? Are we prepared for the coming of Christ? Are you prepared for the tribulations and the persecution that is coming our way? That is one of the things that we see in the Bible, especially in the New Testament. Christ says that you will be persecuted for my name. But blessed is he who is persecuted for my name because the kingdom of heaven will be his. I know that was a paraphrase. Fear not those who can destroy the body, but fear those who can destroy the soul as well as the body. Your soul belongs to your father. No earthly man has the authority to take it from you. That is a blessing. No matter what happens, no matter what you see, no matter what is going on in the world around you, we see that evil men seem to hold sway over us. Everywhere we look, we see evil, tyrannical men, worshipers of idol idols, idolaters, those who worship the works of their own hands. And we see them, and they, they rule over us. They attempt to rule over us. They command us to worship their idols, to bow down and worship their idols, to be subservient to them, to worship them and not our God. Remember, we've talked many, many times on this, is you can only have one master. Christ reminded us that you'll either love one and hate the other or hold to one and despise the other. And when the world commands you to obey and love it, especially when it's worldview, when the world says it's okay to sin, when the world says that a baby's not really a baby, it's just something that you can kill because it's inconvenient. 
It, you just scrape it out and throw it in the garbage, man. That wasn't a gift from God. That was just a bunch of unviable cells. And then you raise your hand and you say, but when it's born and it comes out of the mother's womb, how is it unviable cells? How is it okay to kill that? And they tell you to shut up. We're going to do whatever we want. We're going to scream and rail for our right to murder innocent children. We're going to brainwash your children to become sodomites. We're going to brainwash your children so they don't even know whether they're a boy or a girl. We're going to brainwash them to the point that they have to look to us, to man, for affirmation. Not to their God, not to their creator. That is sin. We see see people worshiping money and the things that money buys. You cannot hold, you know, you can either worship your God or you can worship mammon. And mammon is what? It's the things that money buys. Ladies and gentlemen, all of this is all around us. And, and we can, we often feel angry or depressed or we're like, how, how did God allow these sinful, evil men and women to get in positions of authority? Of course, if you read the Bible, you're like, well, that's obvious he gave us all free will. And there are men in this world, men and women in this world who used their free will, who abused their free will, and they gave authority to the minions of Satan. They have given authority to the men and women who do not worship God. They worship money. They worship power. They worship the idols that they have created. And they've taken power, and they command us to obey them, to disregard our Lord and Savior, to disregard our God, and to obey them. It's not the first time it's ever happened in the history of the world, and it won't be the last. But ladies and gentlemen, it is not for you to predict. It is for you to prepare. It is for you to hold fast to your faith. Even in the face of persecution, Even when the state says you are bad, you are mean, you are this, you are that, they accuse you, they lie. They lied about Christ Jesus. Christ was an innocent man who did nothing to hurt anyone, and they lied about him. Don't you think they're going to lie about you? Why would you think that you're special? Like, yeah, well, they lied about Christ, and they persecuted him, and they murdered him, but they won't do that about they won't do that to me why would they not do that to you you need to be prepared you need to prepare your heart and your soul we need to prepare our family and our children we need to prepare our christian community our church families we need to support one another we need to be there to support each other that is why christ formed us together in churches and of men in congregations of men in communities of men because he knew that we needed to lean upon each other and he reminded us where two or three are together in my name i am there with them that's what you need you need two or three gathered together in his name Because if you are gathered together in his name, he will be there with you. That was a promise he made. So fear not, ladies and gentlemen of my audience, fear not the persecution, fear not the evil, fear not the devil who comes with great wrath, because he knows his time is short. Fear not those who can kill and destroy the body. Fear those who can. Fear him who can destroy your soul. Do not give your soul over to him. Give your soul to your father and be prepared. It is not for you to predict. It is you for you to be prepared at any hour of any day of any moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you prepare to be a strong warrior for Christ, I want you to pray with me the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and the skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. 
In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.